it's something that I've definitely like learned over time. But if you want people to show up and hang out in your corner of Instagram and trust you, and if you want to grow, you have to be consistent. And yes, it's a lot of work. A lot of people don't grow because they're not willing to put in the work. They're like, oh, I don't do that anymore. That's too hard. That takes too much time. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on? You're listening to episode 125 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective, and I'm here to help you build a killer side hustle and elevate your brand outside your day job. And at the end of each episode, I plug a listener of the week. So stick around to figure out how you can get a shout out in a future episode, in the show notes, as well as in the newsletter. So today, if your social media game is boring and your audience growth and engagement is stagnant or non-existent, then we have the perfect guest for you. And I'm talking about the insanely talented, introverted, cat and coffee loving lettering queen, Elizabeth Gray, aka The Greater Good on Instagram. And today we not only have her share her story, but she's going to blow your mind with her unique approach to building her online empire within a mass following of about 150,000 upon the time of me recording this. So today, Elizabeth and I break down her three tips for growing an online engaged audience, uh, the importance of setting expectations for your following, as well as building a theme centered around five buckets of interest, chasing what you want in life, pizza, processed cats, and more. All right, this thing is jam-packed. Elizabeth showed up and just came hella prepared to drop the value today. So this episode is going to help you embrace and show your true self in your work so you're able to attract like-minded people to your tribe. You can find the show notes to this episode with the link below or at perspective-collective slash 125 and do what you do best. Please spread the good word, especially if you're a big fan of uh, Elizabeth in general. Take a screenshot or a video of you working to this in the background, tag us on Instagram stories, and basically I'm gonna return the love. I'm gonna share what you're doing. I know Elizabeth's gonna find a lot of value in it too. And you know, share with us what your biggest takeaway was so we can then share the love back and connect. As always, keep an open mind and act on anything that resonates with you today. Let's go. PC family, today we are joined by Elizabeth Gray, aka The Greater Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Perspective Podcast. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I am doing fantastic. For those who don't know, we kind of had a warm-up conversation, uh, maybe like three, uh, this would have been over a month and a half ago now because we're speaking future in past. So yes, we did an IGTV session, which went over really, really well. Your audience was fired up. And I know a lot of people are fired up for this one. So thank you again for making time to do round two. Of course. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you asking and I'm looking forward to this. All right. So elevator pitch round two, give us a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourself because there's going to be a lot more people listening to this than that caught our Instagram live session. All right, and I've been working on this. I have notes. So yes. my name is Elizabeth Gray. I'm known on the internet as The Greater Good, spelled G-R-A-Y-T-E-R. Um, I am an artist slash creative person who focuses on hand lettering for brands and also content creation with a little bit of illustration mixed in. Uh, my work is playful, detailed, and most importantly, legible, and always in a monochromatic color palette. Wow. Wow, you got it locked down. And there's always some kind of like inspirational vibe to it too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I want to just dive right into the meat because we, we had that pre-warm-up conversation. People can go to our Instagrams to see mm -hmm. that. So I want to dive into this again sooner because we talked about, we both listened to Jenna Kutcher stuff. I mean, me every yeah. now and then, I'm not the target audience, but she has some gold buried in there. And I know she's mm -hmm. big on talking about the five buckets to build your theme and account around, especially like curation is good. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's good to have some kind of theme of what people can expect. So you talked about it before, what would be your five buckets or what did you hear before from her? And then how did you go more in depth with it to build your account? Because you've amassed a massive following. I'm sure by the time this come out, it's going to be like 140,000. But I mean, one can only hope it's kind of taken off this year, which is great. And I appreciate, you know, everyone that's what I call hanging out in my little corner of Instagram because we have a really good time. But um, she really helped me with you know, focusing on exactly, you know, what your message is going to be and what themes you can use, you know, whether it's something like about your personality, like I'm an introvert, 
and I use a lot of, you know, humor, but also real talk about that. Um, I've got, you know, life in an apartment with a cat, but also being a freelance artist, just kind of two other buckets. And then, you know, themes I can use for my art, such as coffee and introversion, and it kind of like, you know, all works together. And it gives your audience something to expect, you know. How important is that of expectations in niching down? Or maybe I'm maybe I'm already getting oh. ahead of myself. <laughs> maybe I'm jumping into maybe what you want to talk about. But today, I really want to go into your biggest tips of building an online engaged audience around these themes. Mm-hmm. So I know you took a hell of a lot of notes. Um, if you could, yes. what would be your so three many. best tips? Like you went all out way more than I was expecting. Oh, so I appreciate that. Oh, of course. This is something I love to talk about. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, Instagram, kind of love-hate relationship with it, but it's kind of where everything happened for me. So I'm kind of more on the love side of that. And I feel like I've gotten to where I know how the platform works and I can help other people figure out how to make it work for them and how they can have some success with that. Oh, love it. Love it. This is something I'm really (laughs) passionate about too. So I can't wait to hear your (laughs) angle. So let's just start off number one. What's your top tip? Or maybe not in order, but consistency. Okay. Oh, yeah. These are not in order of importance. But the first thing I have written down is consistency. You know, whether it's how many times you're posting a week, and that's different for everybody. Like when I started, I was posting about six days a week, and now I'm down to three. But my content, you know, is more detailed, and I'm putting more into each post. You know, less is more. Plus, I have a lot more work now. So I can't take time to just post six days a week because that'd be a full-time job. So are you full-time freelance? Yes, right now. Awesome. When did you make that shift? Because you were, you were in the cake decorating business, right? Yes, that was so much fun. That was another, you know, artistic channel. And I still do it a little bit. But um, I think I made that shift November 2017. It was. Oh, wow. Yeah. All through Instagram? Not long. All through Instagram. Who's your main kind of client? Who's your main clientele? Ooh, just random brands that I reach out to and want to work with, or they reach out to me like, Hey, we'd love for you to do Blake. And I'm like, yes, I'll put it on my schedule. Awesome. So you do the outreach. Your outreach has been big for you. Yes, absolutely. I'm a firm believer in like, okay, if I, you want to work with that company, make it happen. Send the emails, send a follow-up email. If they didn't respond to the first one, a few months later, you know, chase what you want. Ooh, ooh, chase what you want. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anybody say sit. that way. I don't, ha- I've never heard anybody yeah. say it that way. Chase what you want. I like that. Mm-hmm. I'm a very tedious note taker. So you know this already. That's all right. I take very messy notes because I'm thinking so quickly and I have to get it all down. When you do bullet journaling too. So you like have yeah. way nice structure to everything. I try. Okay. It's so a structured mess. <laughs> it's a structured mess. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or orderly chaos. Mm-hmm. So in terms of consistency then, so you started at six times a week. Mm-hmm. Now you're posting three times a week. What's a typical post look like for you? I know, but like, not everybody else knows. Are you talking about like the content of it or like the time frame in, that it takes to create? We'll get to the time frame part because that's what some questions have, but just content mm-hmm. wise. So is it usually like a drawing, a time-lapse video? You're really good at repurposing things. Usually. Thank you. I try to put like a new spin on it or something. So if people have seen a video say on my feed, then I'll put it on my IGTV or I'll add it as like background content for a story and just kind of keep it in people's minds, Mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, Or like I said, show a new angle on it in the Instagram TV to where, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing to make the time-lapse video better. Or this is a coloring technique you can use, or this is like a flourishing technique that you might not have seen in the quick video, but it's, easier to tell and like learn from in the long form video. What's the importance of consistency? Why is consistency so important? It lets people know what to expect. It keeps like for branding purposes, it keeps your voice the same across everything. So I'm looking at my notes again. Um, If you're posting consistently, it gives you accountability as well as an artist to keep trying new things. Even consistency, if you're trying to build a brand and grow as an artist, people want to hear from you. And so even consistency across your Instagram stories, like I, it's little stuff like 
always using the same, maybe the same filter or always using no filter on your stories or using the same, there's what, five different fonts for Instagram yeah. stories. I always use one or two. I never use the other ones, you know, so just all the little things you can do to stay consistent, to build trust, to build engagement, to build relationships. Oh, and That's I think, important. I think this is great right now because you're talking about more than just being consistent when posting multiple times in a week. You were mm -hmm. talking about the nitty gritties of your brand awareness, how yes. you want people to perceive and experience your brand. That's being consistent. Right. I think exactly. that's incredible. It's something that I've definitely like learned over time, but if you want people to show up and hang out in your corner of Instagram and trust you, and if you want to grow, you have to be consistent. And yes, it's a lot of work. A lot of people don't grow because they're not willing to put in the work. They're like, oh, I don't do that anymore. That's too hard. That takes too much time. It can take me up to six hours to, you know, draw a concept for a video and set up everything to film it and then film it and then edit all the clips together and then think of some sort of caption that goes along with that and make sure everything's so put together. It takes time. It, it takes time. Intention and effort. To put it in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think a lot of it comes down to knowing yourself and who do you want to be showing up as the person you want to be in that world and actually being that person as well. So it's having those exactly. five themes, you know, of who you are, it's really understanding yourself and being comfortable with embracing that and showing yourself out there. People Absolutely. crave authenticity right. these days. Yes. And you don't have to share everything. You get to choose what you get to share. And that doesn't mean you're lying. Like I like video games and I like, you know, biking and I like to go to the gym all the time. That's not necessarily part of, my brand and my theme that's part of me but that's not what i'm sharing right now it could change hey yeah. you did you did share that you were listening to the podcast while putting up some weights on a leg press yes. though <laughs> trying to. but it was still on brand with your consistent style which i want to talk about how do you use an app for stories or anything like that because your stories yes. are always so unique okay let's just get into it right now what app do you use yes. for your stories it's all oh, about can the we link this? yeah yes. yeah can we yeah link this in the podcast of notes? course um, this will be in the show notes yeah, there's several great apps. Um, there's one called Unfold, which I like. It has a lot of story templates. So I have that one. It has frames. like a ripped one and like a theater yes. film one. Okay. Love the film one. Love the um, like the internet tab one. That one's really fun. Yeah, um, things like that. You can use an app called Word Swag, which I believe you have to pay for. I like the free apps personally to try them out. And then, you know, if I want to support the creator, I'll buy a few of the different filters or themes but mm -hmm. yeah um something you can do to make your stories stand out and your instagram is just not doing what everyone else is doing like don't be boring that's one of the biggest tips that i have is just don't be boring you can make what makes you happy keep an open mind like yes i post art but i try to post it in a really interesting unique creative way like i'll mock it up on a wall or on a book cover or just try to do something that are making that's going to make people want to stop their scroll love it you know because there's so much content being uploaded every single day what's going to make them stop and want to engage with you and be interested and hang out in your corner of instagram mm, i love how you keep saying your corner of instagram love it all right um any other apps for stories that you use besides unfold and word swag that's pretty much it i don't use word swag a ton okay I pretty much because I try to keep it easy and as quick as possible. Um, I used to use a continual app, mm, which but now you don't need that for, anyway, right? Because they let yeah. you record as like over fifteen seconds per story, so that's really helpful. Cool, cool, cool. And yeah. do you also use that's the and use like the time lapse um, for like your coffee pours and everything too? You're really, really good yes. at it. Okay, cool. Um, finally, mm -hmm. let's get to number two. Everything on iPhone. <laughs> everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's something crazy. Also, we'll talk about this too, but she does everything on her iPhone and iPad. It's wild. It's wild. Because I have to. It's, it's, but that's the key. It's like what you have is enough. What you, be resourceful. Mm -hmm. Use your imagination. Like you are the queen of doing that. Well, some people just get so paralyzed. Like I don't have the fanciest equipment. I don't have the best pencils. I don't have this or that. Like that's what held me back from doing video. And now each video is slowly improving as I understand it and invest in something better. But I'm making do with what I have. Exactly. So. And this goes back to the whole people want to grow on Instagram, but they, oh, maybe they don't want to post until they're really good at something. You can't wait until you're good to start. Like maybe we can throw up some of my prehistoric Instagram posts that are just absolutely awful. I thought they were great, but you know, I went ahead and started 
just throwing that out there into the universe to get some feedback and for accountability. Like you can't wait to start until you have everything you need because then most likely you'll never start. And you guys can go back to episode 120 and listen to the episode all about just starting. So very timely plug right there. All right. (laughs) Enough with the tangents from Scotty at the moment. Let's move on to number two. Well, this is going back to something else we talked about was know your content and your branding, even your stories. So this is also with consistency, having the consistency over all that content. But, you know, your three to five topics and your buckets, um, your voice across your captions and your stories and everything like that needs to be consistent. Um, Storytelling, as opposed to just talking to everyone. Your audience is not everyone. Your audience is specific people that you're looking for that like and want to learn and talk about the same topics you do. Because if you talk to everyone, you're just yelling into the abyss and no one's going to pay any attention. So I actually had someone tell me something the other day that meant a lot to me. They said, I came for the art, but I stayed for your story. Mm. And that just made me feel like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing it right. Like, I want to keep that up. It was so encouraging. So thank you to whoever said that because it was anonymously submitted. So, And this is something I'm working on. I'm getting to know my content and my captions because sometimes I write like a heartfelt caption feels like no one pays attention but you get like one message of someone who impacted and I have to remind myself you know all I'm trying to do is put something out in the world that makes a positive impact on one person at a time instead of you know trying to create something for everyone so you know focus on the one person not for everyone when you try to create for everyone it's hard to make your work resonate with someone all it takes exactly. is one person at a time to wave your freak flag and get them to join your tribe exactly it's niching down yes you say niching I say niche, but now I hear everybody say yeah, niching, niche. and now I want to say both. I never know what to say. <laughs> no, I'm going to be confused. Thanks. So I'm going to niche down by saying yeah. niche from now on. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> number three, what's your, what's your, number, what's your number third <laughs> top audience building, number, engaged number audience third. building tips? Number third. A2 and B. Um, well, I have a lot of things written down for number three, but they all kind of build back into everything else. Um, I appreciate Appreciating the people you already have and engaging with your audience. um, I heard, I believe Sarah Tasker said this. She said to spend more time on other people's feeds than your own. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it is social media. Um, When I had a smaller following, I was able to respond to every single comma and every single message. And I still do that as much as I can because I want to, I appreciate the people that are already here and I want to show them that. So I mean, if you have one follower, you're an influencer. And if you get one comment or, you know, 20 comments, you should respond to every single one as much as you can. And not just, you know, an emoji, but try to do a little something more, create a conversation, build those relationships. And those are the people that are going to stay hanging out with you in your little corner of Instagram for the long haul. For sure. Um, Well, then I think I have a perfect question to bring in from Belinda Co. I said her name right this time. I butchered it last time she asked the question. Do you, do you know who this is? Her name pops up all the time. She's very, yes, very good at being social. Yes, we chatted a lot on Instagram. Okay. Yes. Oh, and she's so talented with her work and her details and just everything. So. Shout out to Belinda. She's all over the place on Instagram. <laughs> she's doing it right. But she asks, how do you manage to respond to the billions of DMs and comments when you have such a giant and engaged audience? Do you have to be on your phone for hours? It can get to that point, but I try to schedule time each day to set aside just to engage with people. And sadly, like I said, I can't respond to every single one, but um, I I do read through them all. And if I I have a question that is asked quite frequently, I'll screenshot that DM, you know, ask permission as long as there's nothing personal and I'll upload it to my stories so that more people have a chance to see it and get their question answered. But yeah. Something I want to double up on is we talk about you schedule time for all of this, how you must have a a hella supportive husband who is all about you doing what you're doing. How do you make time for you and make sure you're making time for your relationships? Cause that's like gotten me in trouble in the past and like, I'm a lot better about it now. Like communication has been huge, but you know, how intentional are you outside of the social media and the brand building with your life? Oh, you, I mean, you have to be because it's easy when you love your work as much as, you know, us artists do, it's really easy to just pour everything into that and get carried away, you know, stay up till 1am. But 
I do, you have to communicate with your significant other. And I communicate a lot with my husband and let him know while I'm working through the day. Okay. If he's coming home, you know, Oh, by the way, I haven't, dinner's not ready. I need to finish his project. Are you cool with that? Just so like, you know, what to expect walking in the door. I always make sure I stop everything, have dinner with him and let him know, okay, you know, I've got a deadline tonight. I've got to work on that. Just keeping that open communication, but also knowing when to say no and put away all the work and just focus, obviously spending more time with him than on the other things, which can be hard. Cause like how do you know when to work, but how do you know when to say no? Sometimes I don't, but usually I can tell by the look on his face. I need to say no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just kind of, you know, face palm. So. Um, I'm, I, I get it. I get it. I'm yep. right there with you. That's a lot of things. Like some people have a really hard time getting addicted to their passion, but when you're addicted to the passion, it's hard to not be tunnel vision to like see that you could be abusing relationships or the other highly things that need to be prioritized, like mental health or, you know, children or wives or spouses or family. Like, yeah, been exactly. there. I think that you should know when to stop if what you're doing is negatively impacting other things in your life, like the housework isn't getting done or, you know, your spouse is upset at you or other things are falling away. That's when you need to kind of like check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to Charlie Jeffrey's question. How do you come up with the ideas for your pieces that aren't client-based? And what is your process for deciding how to lay them out, thumbnails, et cetera? Ooh, lots of thumbnails. So normally I like to start with something I'm going to say, which helps the five buckets. If you're just stuck on not knowing what to say. Do you have like a, a compiled list of ideas that you have stored away somewhere? Or is it always just a fresh yes. one off the noggin? Okay, good. A lot of times it's fresh because I'm very much in the moment. This is how I'm feeling today. This is what I want to talk about because that helps with, you know, creating the piece and then the caption and the engagement and everything like that going along with, well, for me, what I feel in the moment. But um, I do, if I have just like a bunch of random ideas, I keep them all. I've got a sketchbook and a bunch of ideas um, logged on my iPad. So I'm feeling a little stuck or frustrated. I'll have one, you know, that's half done. I'm able to pull that out. Awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you have like a... a do you act on one of your themes just when it, you're in the moment or do you have like a scheduled day of Wednesday's my introverted day and Thursday is a cat reference. No. For, okay. Okay. You just totally yeah. act in the moment. Cause I know Jenna yes. Kutcher talks about that. You know, this is their day for body positivity. This is this for this, yes. for that predictability. I feel like that kind of puts me in a box. Personally, I like the freedom of being able to talk about whatever I'm feeling like that day. It's still centered around all my topics. But, you know, maybe this day I'm just feeling really overwhelmed and I need to talk about self-care and mental health just because that's how I'm feeling. So, yeah, Perfect. I can't do that. <laughs> no, that, that's great. I'm, I'm one of those I try to act in the muse as well. Um, mm -hmm. Do you store your ideas then in like a notes app when you say on your iPad? Yes. I've got them in my sketching app on my iPad per create. I've got, you know, caption and topic ideas in my notes notes and then uh, just a regular notebook as well that I carry with me all the time and I can just scribble. This one's a mess. <laughs> when do you decide if you're going to work analog or when do you decide if you're going to work digital or do you work digital so much that you force yourself to do analog to get a break? No, I like both so much. It's whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Big on the feels. I like it. Yeah. I like all it. the feels. You don't have but rules or constraints that you put on yourself. I dig it. That's why I think I was drawn to freelancing is because I was that a was that a, a drawing pun? Stifled. <laughs> no, oh no, that was not good. on purpose. That was it good. Just run to my family, so I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's let's keep going with the questions. Unless you had something, okay. also let's backtrack. Did you have anything else you wanted to dive deeper into? Those uh, top three tips. You put down a lot of notes. I want to make sure. Oh. Do you have any like uh, honorable mentions? Uh, tip four, tip five. Ooh, I guess not a tip, but just be aware that everything's kind of dictated by the algorithm and you're going to have really, really good weeks and really, really bad weeks. And that doesn't necessarily speak to your work. Um, a lot of times it, when I found something 
or I was working like through a phase where I wasn't like feeling it. And I wasn't feeling inspired and my engagement was kind of down. I would just take a good hard look at everything and then be like, okay, I really got to do something really interesting, really good, really crazy. And usually that failure has been a catalyst for success or some new venture or something. So just, to, yeah. Interesting. That made sense. Interesting. So when you yeah. get an idea, like a crazy mock-up or a floating thing of mugs, do you <laughs> act on that ASAP? If you just have something brilliant, do you just like make time for that ASAP just to get it out? Usually. Yeah. yeah if I'm laying in bed at like 1130 PM at night, I'm like, oh my goodness, I should try this. I'll get out of bed and like write everything down and do like a really, really quick sketch and then get back in bed. Nice. I have to get it out. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm going to forget it when I wake up in the morning. I love so it. Yeah, I, I keep a sketchbook by my bed story. too. I do the same mm-hmm. thing. Perfect. Hashtags real quick. Let's talk about the game of hashing yep. and tagging. Yes. What's your thoughts on you get up to 30? Do you use up to 30 since it's like lottery tickets? Why wouldn't you not want all 30 lottery tickets? Do you use the mm-hmm. same kind of set each time? Or what's your strategy for hashtags? I usually, I mean, we're allowed to use all 30. I usually use all 30. And this kind of goes back to the five topics thing. You can do hashtags related, like in bunches related to those topics, as long as they're what your photo is about. You know, you could do um, photography tags, hand lettering tags, type, um, bullet journal, cats, coffee, et cetera. Um, So with your different topics and themes that you do, so you have a a set of specific hashtags for each that you have with maybe some kind of underlying, these are the same 15 you maybe use that relate to monochromatic hand lettering. Yes, exactly. Cool. And not using hashtags that have way too many posts under them. I know this is kind of basic, maybe for some people who've been doing this a while, but maybe not for others if they're not using hashtags. Yeah, absolutely. If usually the good rule is a million or less is going to be a community. It's a smaller, more niching down. It's a more niche hashtag and it's going to have an active engaged audience of people who actually care where they're It'd be different, you know, the hashtag love has how many millions and millions many. of posts. There's posts getting thrown up every second. And no one's going to see it. Yeah. And, so, yeah. And, and, and a lot of people don't know there is the strategy to hashtags is you want to compete to be in like the recent or in the top section of hashtags. Yes. So if you're a smaller account, even using something that's like a million or sh- uh, smaller, like 500,000 to a million, like that's mm-hmm. really hard for you to compete in. So even exactly. getting, even if like out of your 30, maybe 20 of them, if you're a smaller account, just in like thousands or less, you know, go try and dominate those 50,000 to a hundred thousand hashtags, you know, and then have maybe exactly. sprinkle in Mix some bigger up. ones and then sprinkle in just a couple of them, you know, like the, the multi-million ones. So, you know, you go and dominate and try to find those smaller areas for you to live in. And exactly. And another good thing is to go to people's feeds that you admire and look to see what hashtags they're using and go check the hashtag before you post in it just to make sure it's a category you want to be in. Mm-hmm. So you do a little work on your hashtag search research. Yes. Same. I, do. I don't think they're the most important thing, but I think if you're wanting to grow on Instagram, it's definitely something to put some time into and like learn how they work, learn which ones work for you and kind of work with those. And you're on a business count, right? Yes. Have you always found success with a business account? Yes. Um, I heard that Instagram was stifling the reach of business accounts and that you're not going to get engagement if you switch over. But Instagram actually came out and said in you know press release that they do not do anything different. You know, kind of like how Facebook, we you know they stifle brand accounts. But at least Instagram has told us that they hasn't. So I went and trusted them because I needed all the different insights for my posts and, you know, um, how many people are clicking on the link in your bio and how many people from what country, like what demographics essentially. Yeah. Cause that's important. If you're wanting to work with brands and get paid to post on Instagram, you have to have that kind of information. So for me, it's been really helpful. So do you have like, so you already have like, I, I think the people who are thriving the most on business accounts have everything you said, those top three consistency, know your content and appreciate engage uh, with the people that you have, you know, you understand your brand message. Um, do you also have like a specific time and a day that you shoot for? So you build an, an audience within that time slot. Like, do you have like, this yes. is the time I try to post just, it's going to be different for everyone. And you're in Virginia, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. So, so Eastern standard time. what's like your money time? This isn't for everyone. So don't go posting exactly the same time as her. Correct. It's, it's all about experimentation in the beginning. I like to post between five and 6 PM because it's kind of end of day, people are getting off work, they're more on their phones, 
but people within yeah. your time zone though. So are you, yes. are you not paying attention to like most of your audience is United States with the big city of New York and then Los Angeles. And then you also have UK and then you also have like Indonesia, yes. you know, so at so, five, six o'clock for them, that's somewhere early in the morning for that part of the world. Exactly. So if your audience is more you know, centered in a different part of the world, think about their schedule, and what their time is and try to post like, um, I know someone who lives in the US, but most of their audience is actually in the UK. So they have to post at eight or 9 p.m. And then that shows up, I believe it shows up early morning for them. Maybe it's not 8 or 9 p.m. But yeah, you have to, and that's what's helpful with the insights and the audience demographics is knowing exactly where they are and being able to make sure that, that your post shows up. So your, in, so your insights tells you your audience is most active at like later in the evening? Interesting. Yes, interesting. All right. Yeah, mine's like in the morning at you know, nine to noon is the money slot, but my, my engagement's been down right now. So you're making me want to go and rethink everything I'm doing at the moment, but it's, it's like a fun little challenge and task, you know? When you're down, it really forces you to kind of think outside the box and try something new and work at something. Yeah. That take the really challenge, accept, but don't, yeah. don't be one to whine and complain about it. Like Scotty did in 2017. Don't be that person, you know, be accountable and do something about it. Exactly. Chase right. what you want. Exactly. Chase what you want. I love that. That's going to be, that's definitely going to be part of this theme of the show. Okay. Um, last question. And then one more quick question before going to rapid fire. Uh, my friend, Emily Miles says, it seems like you've really got the Pinterest game down to a T. I've never even looked at your Pinterest game. Any advice or blogs to read on how this site actually works and how to get active on it? And for me real quick, Jenna Kutcher has been helpful yes. in this area. Yeah. Did you take that's her, uh, did you take her course that she put out yes. on it? Okay. Not the masterclass. I took the, uh, the free webinar. Okay. Free webinar. Yeah, for sure. What would your biggest tips be? Understanding the platform. Like I understand Instagram and I think that's why I made it work for me. So understanding how Pinterest works, what works on there, what people are looking for and want to see and how the tags work and everything. It's a search engine. Understand the platform. Yeah, exactly. It's not social media. So play to the platform. Enable a business account or switch to a business account, verify mm -hmm. and claim your domain mm -hmm. and enable rich pins and yes. think about keywords in your description within your, uh, um, your titles, as well as you can use up to 20 hashtags within your posts. Yes. So that's something too. And that's not super popular yet, but that is chronological order. Chronological. Yes. Okay, cool. And re, you know, repin your own content. Cause it, Content on Pinterest kind of stays alive forever, whereas Instagram, it kind of gets buried in the feed and maybe people forget about it. Mm -hmm. So remember that as well. Um, Keep it and, fresh. And then you have like one thing in mind. Are you directing people to your Instagram? Is that your number one goal is to get people to your Instagram? Right now, yes, because that's where most of my people are and my growth is. And that's where I get a lot of my brand contacts is they'll DM me or send me an email and say, hey, I saw your work on Instagram. Because essentially for an artist, it's kind of like your portfolio. It is. Which, because I'm still working on my website. Yeah, we're gonna so. get with you on building, uh, yes. putting your eggs in other baskets right now. Because you you're yes. doing too well. I would hate to see something happen. So, yeah, it, and exactly. you're gonna you're gonna I'm, thrive. Especially, I hope so. Well, like Instagram shut down, you know, last week for about twelve hours. I couldn't post them on the podcast. I definitely felt the burn. On that. And it's just a really good. Reader. Yeah, you can't yeah. rely on that. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, I'm just writing copy is hard for me and that's what i'm working on right now to fill out this but i'm working on my website heck yeah awesome um before we go to rapid fire what's one piece of advice you give to your past self when you were just starting off Ooh, i think just to keep it up because there are so many times when everything wasn't going well, or it was really, really hard, or I was working two jobs and still trying to hustle on the side and was just kind of like, why am I doing this? It's not working. Am I being stupid to dream? You know, just to encourage myself and to tell myself to keep going. You have no idea where you're going to be in a year. Like last year, I could never have imagined myself being where I am right now. I know it's going to be the same next year. So just keep it up. Chase what you want. Chase what you want. That is the title. That is the title. Yes. <laughs> All right. Rapid fire questions. If you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Chicken bacon ranch. Anywhere specific? 
from a specific place, uh, my kitchen, because I like to cook my own food. All right. I was like, where's my <laughs> kitchen? Is that a nice restaurant down your street? No, my kitchen. Okay. Yeah. If we ever link up, can can you make me some? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I went to culinary school. I will hook you up. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Cool. If you could have lunch with one person dead or alive, who would it be and why? I was listening to this on your other podcast to be prepared for the rapid fire questions. And I'm not sure about this one. Um, Julia Child. Ooh, saying. actually, probably yes. No, uh, really? I was just kidding because of culinary. I grew up without cable, so all I could watch was Bob Ross, Julia Child, and like Iowa Public Television, so like Reading Rainbow. That was like only thing I got to grow up watching. Loved Reading Rainbow. Yes. Yeah, we were the same. We didn't have cable. No cable. Reading Rainbow was the best. Um, Julia Child are honestly, Bobby Flay is amazing. Now we're Bobby off Flay. of lettering and onto food, but... He's right. I'm hungry. I'm so. on my lunch period right now too. Right? So. <laughs> All right. Um, what's your go-to lettering weapon of choice? Ooh, analog or digital? Mm, let's go analog because everybody's doing digital right now. And I really appreciate how much effort and attention and detail you put into your analog pieces. Pencil, eraser, and a gel pen. Yeah, the gel That's pen. That's all I need. That's I was waiting I need. for the gel pen. Man, this, <laughs> this chick fills out whole images with a gel pen because it's juicy and you get that ink flow that you like, right, to mm -hmm. get it dark. So And it makes it a really nice video. It's not boring content. So. Not boring content. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody's like, wow, she's crazy, but this is so satisfying to watch. Yeah, well, I am crazy, but that's what makes it fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's another one. How do you make your Instagram gifts and how can people find and use yours? I saw you just post that in your stories Ooh. and I think this is so cool. I love it when I like randomly see your gifts and I was using yours and didn't even know it. But now I like, can't, I can pick them out, you know, just cause yes. I know your style now. Because branding and consistency, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I make those actually using my iPad. I will have actually a tutorial on that. That's going to be the first blog post when my website goes up, which hopefully it should be up. That's my goal by the time this podcast episode goes up. So you can go check out that tutorial. I will have everything completely in depth, but basically make transparent files on your iPad, think through the different frames and how you want the gift to act, upload it to Photoshop, turn it into a little video. You have to have a branded account on Giphy and have that approved so you can actually, people can use your gifts and then you just add what hashtags you want. So I have the greater good, Elizabeth Gray, and then everything on the topic of the gift as well. Awesome. That was a really long answer. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Rapid fire, <laughs> rarely or rapid. Um, yeah. What's your favorite coffee brand? Javelia. Javelia. It's the only thing I drink or make at the house and drink. I'll like to go out and visit a local coffee shop. But yeah, it's Swedish coffee. It's amazing. Do you grind your own beans? Oh, yes. Okay. Do Is there you, any other way? <laughs> I, do you have like a Chemex press or what? It, what's your process? Um, a conical drip coffee maker. Conical drip coffee. So not a basket, but a cone. Okay. Gives you better flavor. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Learning so much. I know this one, <laughs> but not everybody else does. Cats or dogs? Cats. You're the first person to answer what I wanted to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Emmy's yeah, not with us, forever. but if you want to go see Emmy, go jump on her Instagram. I think she has a story highlights or go watch our IGTV episode because both of our cats, Lucy and Emmy, are like identical except Lucy's like 15 times bigger. You know, uh, our cats are all over <laughs> that one. So uh, where do you get your inspiration online and offline? I try not to look for it online. Love it. Because it's honestly more detrimental to your creativity than helpful um offline i like to look at patterns textures fabric um there's type everywhere you know if you look at board games if you look at road signs if you look at restaurant menus i love to just gather all that information so everywhere but the internet let's say yes, that it's Book perfect I'm, I'm, everything I, i'm digging that as like the pattern of what people continue to keep saying and stop looking online for stuff and i love that because there's so much people regurgitating the same work Beautiful answer. All right. Last one. Where can people go to follow you and support you? Uh, you can find me at, at the greater good on Instagram spelled G R A Y T E R. Um, same on Pinterest. Don't really do Twitter and my website. The greater good.net should be up by the time this episode airs in April. So yeah, Instagram and the website. Awesome. Come hang out in my little corner. Your real, your own pixel patch of your own land on your website. Yep. 
rented cool. land. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time today. And you have by far been the most prepared guest and you always deliver the value. You're always so open and transparent with your process and sharing what you know. I know I can speak for everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Of course, I really appreciate you inviting me. I love having the chance to just chat with you and push my introverted self out of the box a little bit. So thanks. I had a really good time. You handle it so well. And despite technical difficulties that people probably won't even notice, you know, because we got bomb editors over here. No, you crushed it and you are official family of the podcast and you will definitely be on again if you want to. Of course. I look forward to it already. All right. Have a fantastic day. We appreciate you. Thanks. You too. Same. Cool. PC family, Elizabeth Gray, AKA the greater good. That was probably the most prepared guest that I've had on the show today. She showed up, she came prepared to just deliver as much value as possible. Elizabeth, you killed it. And thank you to you for asking all your questions. If you want to be a part of that, I'll mention it here shortly, but join the Facebook group. You know what time it is. Please do what you do best. If you found value in what Elizabeth said today, go blow her up on social media right now. Um, she really lives on Instagram. We talked about this and getting her on other platforms, but on Instagram, go blow her up. Let her know what your biggest takeaway was and just connect with her. She's an incredible person. She's really good at engaging back with people. And I know she would love to hear from you. So Elizabeth, again, Thank you for your time. You better believe we will do a follow-up episode in the near future. Thank you. And again, if you want to ask questions and get your name shouted on an episode, other than just being a listener of the week, join the Facebook community, all right, at The Perspective Dash Collective. We got a global community full of content creators sharing their work, sharing feedback, sharing resources all across the world. And we would love to have you be a part of the family. Please join the movement again at The Perspective Dash Collective on Facebook. And if you're finding value in this show and you want to support it, there are two ways you can make this happen. First off, you can become a financial backer over at patreon.com slash perspective podcast. The second way to support the show is by subscribing and leaving a rating and review over in iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Not only does subscribing and leaving a rating and review help the show climb the charts in the arts design category, but it also allows me to publicly return the love as well as a listener of the week. And this week's listener of the week comes from Ant Ferrets 91 Pedal Strokes from USA titled Keep It Up. Uh, they state, hey, Scotty, love the podcast. Listen to it every week via your website. I keep hearing about the Facebook group, so I joined and now writing this review. That's dope. Keep up the amazing work, and I hope to be on the podcast someday. Ferrettodesigns.com. So, Anthony, thanks. I appreciate you just engaging with me, joining the group, leaving a review. It means the world to me, man, and keep busting your ass because maybe we can get you on the show someday. And as I sign off, I got to give a huge thank you to my executive assistant, Paige Garland, my video specialist, Colton Bacher, that's my dude, and a shout out to Nick Jenkins for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.